So let's see if you know enough math to be able to solve this simple math word problem, which is the following. You are in the center of a square room and 25 feet away from a corner. What is the area of this room? Okay, so that is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so the first thing that we want to uh, kind of recognize is that we have a math word problem here. So I always use something called the rule of three, and that is to, re uh, to read a problem at least three times before you really start taking any action, okay? Make sure you understand the information and obviously the question. So once again, we're in the center, okay, of a square room and 25 feet away from a corner. So you're probably visualizing this already. You're like, all right, here's a square I'm right in the middle. And that's good. You want to kind of visualize or start constructing a model of the problem. Okay, so you're like, all right, I'm in the middle of a square room uh, and I'm 25 feet away from a corner. So the question is, what is the area of this room? So obviously we're going to have to know a thing or two about squares and the area uh, of a square, but uh, the best approach, once you kind of read the problem or really understand uh, the problem, is to model the situation by making a nice, thing, you know, kind of diagram uh, so you can see the problem. Okay, because oftentimes if you can see the problem, you can see the solution. Okay, so here is my kind of uh, model of the problem. So here is a square. Okay, now here. I have some symbols that are very important uh, to the situation. I'll talk about this in just one second. So here is a square. We're in the center of this uh, square, and we're 25 feet away from the corner. Now, if you're right in the middle of a square, okay, so if you kind of just think about this, even common sense, even if you don't know the math, you're right in the middle. Well, we're equal distance. Uh, uh, the, the distance to any of these corners is going to be the same, right? So 25 feet to this corner, well, it's 25 feet to this corner, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we don't need to uh, kind of list out all the corners because that could be confusing. So I'm 25 feet away, let's say, from this corner. It doesn't make a difference because I'm 25 feet away from all the corners of the square. But uh, here, we need to recognize or review what a square is. Now, some of you might be saying, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know what a square is. You know, you don't need to, uh, you know, make me feel that bad because I know what a square is. It's like a perfect little square thing. Well, that's true, okay, but uh, technically it's a four-sided polygon. But let's just review some really important factors or uh, properties of squares. Now, the first thing is that uh, the, the sides of a square or what we call congruent, okay? They're the same side, the same length, right? So this length is uh, the same as this length, the same as this length is the same as that length. And in geometry, you can put a little line right there to indicate uh, that these sides are all the same. But uh, a real important properties of squares is that the corners, the angles of the corners of the square are 90 degrees, right? We call this a right uh, angle in geometry and it's symbolized by this little tiny square in the corner. Okay, that means that that, uh, that angle, excuse me, is 90 degrees, all right? So that's a really important aspect of a square. Now, there's another thing about this uh, square uh, that we need to kind of study here is that we're in the center, okay? Now, if we continue on this way, we're 25 feet uh, to the corner from here to here, right? So from the center, uh, to this corner, we're 25 feet. From the center to this corner, we're 25 feet. So this entire length is what we call the diagonal of the square. So if we're 25 and 25, the entire um, length of that diagonal, okay, is going to be what? Well, it's going to be 50 feet. So what we want to uh, think about here is that we have a triangle here, and specifically, we have what we call a right triangle because this angle right here is 90 degrees. Now, why do we need to think about a triangle? Well, because to find the area of this entire square, we're going to have to know the formula uh, for the area of a square. 
Okay, so what is the formula for the area of a square? Well, basically, it's just the length times the width, but uh, because the length and the width are the same, we're just going to call this the side times the side because the side, uh, the sides are the same, so the area of a square is equal to the side square. Okay, so these are, or this um, formula is one part of solving this problem, but there is another formula to get the answer. Okay, now here we have the diagonal of this uh, triangle, but what we need is the side. Okay, we need the side of the square in order to answer the question, which is the area of the square. Okay, so what do we need to do? Well, we need to kind of really focus in on the fact that we are dealing with a right triangle. Again, a triangle that has one of its angles as uh, 90 degrees is what we call a right triangle, and these are extremely important triangles in geometry. Now, anytime you come across a right triangle, you need to think about this next formula, right? This is critical, and uh, it's really not a formula. It's something called a theorem, and here it is, right? So this is called the Pythagorean theorem. It's a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, right? This is something you want to put into your long-term memory. You're like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math, I'll put it right in there into my long-term brain housing group. So in mathematics, there is a ton of formulas that you're going to uh, study over, you know, your uh, courses of, um, you know, um, as you progress through mathematics. And you're going to get overwhelmed with a lot of formulas, but there's some things, again, that you need to kind of put into your long-term memory. Uh, this is one of them, okay, along with the area of a square as well. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, right? Once again, this is called the Pythagorean theorem. And uh, this establishes a relationship between the sides of a right triangle. Okay, so how does this work? Well, it works like this, okay? If we, first of all, let me just go ahead and tell you uh, what this is, right? So A, B, and C are the lengths of a right triangle. Now C, okay, is always the longest side of the right triangle. Now it kind of looks hopefully somewhat obvious that this is the longest side, but the longest side will always be opposite of the right angle and it has a special name, it's called the hypotenuse, okay? So C has to be this right here, the longest side of the right triangle, again, the hypotenuse. So that is what C is going to be. Now, A and B are the other sides of the right triangle, so it's got one of, the, one of those sides is gonna be, you know, shorter or smaller, or in the case of a square, these will be the same sides or the same uh, distance, okay? All right, so as long as you understand that, we can now talk about the relationship uh, between A, B, and C in a right triangle. So what the Pythagorean theorem states is that if we square this side, okay, and then we add it to the square of this side, it's gonna be equal to the square of this side. So let's just take a simple example here. And uh, of course, this looks like a square, but I'm just gonna throw in some other numbers. So let's say this was equal to three and this was equal to four. Okay, so if this is three, four, well, our um, hypotenuse will be five. This is what we call um, a three, four, five, a Pythagorean triple. Okay, you don't really need to remember that, but I'm just gonna show you uh, this relationship, okay? So if you have a right triangle and uh, one side is three and the other side is four, well, the hypotenuse is five. And we can kind of demonstrate that by using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so here we go. So it's going to be three squared. Let me kind of erase all this here. So we're gonna let A equal to three and B equal to four for this uh, simple example. So three squared plus four squared should be equal to five squared. Okay, so let's see if this works out. So three squared is nine plus four squared is 16 and five squared is 25. 9 plus 16 is 25, so 25 indeed is equal to 25. Okay, so that is the relationship uh, uh, between the sides of a right triangle. Again, the Pythagorean theorem. So as long as you know this and the area of a square, well, we have kind of what we need in order to solve this problem. Okay, so here is our situation now, going back to our square room. Now the diagonal, the complete distance from corner to corner is 50 feet, right? Because we're in the center, it takes us 25 feet to get to one corner and 25 feet to get to the other corner. So it's 50 feet to go across this diagonal, which is the same thing as this um, 
as the hypotenuse of this uh, right triangle right here. Now we're going to let this variable x represent the sides, okay? Because x, remember, we're dealing with a square. This side and this side is the same, okay? So basically, uh, we can use the same variable, right? So this is x and this is x. It's the same distance. And what we're trying to solve for is the side, right? Once we have the side, then we know the area is going to be the side squared. So if we can figure out what x is equal to, well, all we have to do is get that answer and multiply it by itself, and we'll have the area. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this math here. So we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So a is what? Well, a is going to be x. What's b? Well, b is going to be x as well. But we know c is always going to be the hypotenuse. In this case, it's 50 b. So this would be 50 squared. All right, so here we go. So it's going to be x squared, all right? So x squared is simply x squared plus x squared is x squared uh, is equal to 50 squared. 50 times 50 is 2,500. Okay, so we have x squared plus x squared. So that means we have two x squares. We can just simply add the coefficients. So we have two x squared is equal to 2,500. Now to solve for x, what we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by two. So 2,500 divided by two is 1250. So x squared is equal to 1250. Now, uh, a lot of students or a lot of people would be like, all right, I'm getting this right. I'm figuring it out. I just need to solve for x. But hey, hold on here. We already solved the problem. Now, you might be saying, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, remember the area of a square is the side squared. So in this case, if x is the side, x times x is the area, okay? So the area is actually x squared. And we just solved for x squared, so right here, x squared is uh, 1250, so we will have solved the problem. But uh, to solve for x, well, let's just go ahead and just uh, continue with the algebra here. What we, uh, what we need to do is to take the square root of both sides, because we have a quadratic equation. So that gives us x is equal to positive negative uh, thir approximately 35.35, but uh, here we're talking about distance, so x is going to be equal to 35.35. That's the approximate distance of the side, okay? But the exact area is going to be x times x, or x squared, and we have that right here. That's 1250. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style, and if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. So a lot of us uh, students or a lot of people would think, you know, they kind of get a kind of tunnel vision about the problem. They're like, all right, I got to get this side. So they're looking or they're focused in on getting uh, what X is equal to. But if we thought about this, if we're solving for X, of course, X is approximately 35.35. But uh, the area is the question. So x times x uh, is x squared. That is the area. So if we can solve for x squared, well, we have the area. But of course, uh, we already kind of covered that. But uh, if we have 35.35 feet, okay, now this is critical too because we are talking about units of measure here. Well, then simply we can just find the area by taking 35.35 uh, and squaring it or multiplying it by itself. And when you do that, you're going to get approximately, now notice this symbol, okay, this little squiggly thing right here means approximately in mathematics. It also, um, well, there's other things that it means uh, in geometry, but uh, basically what you need to kind of understand is that it's not 100% equal to, it's not exact, okay, so 35.35 times 35.35 is approximately 1,249 uh, 1, square feet, okay? Because this is feet, and this is feet, and we're multiplying feet times feet, so we end up with feet squared, okay? So when we're talking about area, you have to be very, very aware of the units of measure, all right? So if you came up with this answer, that is fantastic. You definitely get an A+, plus, but this, uh, this right here is the exact, precise, right answer. Okay, so again, all right, 
uh, you know, if you didn't remember the math or maybe you never really learned it uh, the first time. Okay, If you were like me back in uh, high school days, and that for me was the early 1980s, I really wasn't paying attention uh, to math at all. <laughs> I definitely wasn't the best student. Matter of fact, I just kind of squeaked uh, through. It wasn't until after I uh, served in the Marine Corps, did some other things in my life. Then I went to school. I was more focused and disciplined and more committed to learning. Okay, so you can't really go by, you know, how well you uh, did in math in your high school years, especially if you didn't do well in school. It has nothing to do with your intelligence or your potential to learn math. Okay, so if you're interested in learning mathematics, you just simply need to get yourself into a good course of instruction and build up your skills and confidence one step at a time. Okay, so hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.